Good evening. For those of us here tonight that are 70 years old or younger, Jack Cardiff was shooting film before we were born. Jack Cardiff is the most fascinating cinematographer you've never heard of. He booked his first cinematography gig in 1918 at the mere age of four, and then went on to shoot over 108 films and direct a mere 15. He saw it all. Technicolor, all variants of celluloid, the digital age, cameras ranging from glorified wooden boxes to jumbo jets to Alexas to fake taxi spy cams to spherical, anamorphic, the red shoes to Rambo, this magnificent bastard thrived through it all. What fascinates me most about Jack is the, the slippery, sensual, supple, sibilant, apparently, impact that he's had on succeeding generations of cinematography. Most cinematographers have been influenced by Jack, and they don't even know it. Nowadays, when making a film or any expensive visual work, you're referencing others. I'll shoot something like this, I'll shoot something like that, I'll sing something like this, I'll draw something like that. We live in an age of constant reference and, frankly, a narrow echo chamber of visual grammar. Jack was a pioneer of image. He was a Christopher Columbus to an era of colour pictures. So where does one draw inspiration from in that situation? If there's nothing to reference, where does it come from? For him, it was painting. Dugas, Van Gogh, Caravaggio, Turner, Moucher, the masterful lighting, the examined framing, and the moods communicated with colour. He brought the world of painting to motion, and the motion into emotion. There was something very, very special and unique about the English use of Technicolor, particularly uh, by a man like, uh, like Cardiff. And that became something else, and that had a lot to do with emotion, I think. It had more to do with painting. Not to say that the, that the American uh, cinematographers didn't use painting. Of course, they were, they were brilliant. Uh, but, um, how should I put it? That was a, a different type of commodity. For fun, the OG would shoot portraits of famous actresses during 30-minute lunch breaks on production. It's remarkable to think that many photographers of today, yourself included, can't even come close to creating such magnetic lighting and moods, even with full days to prepare. How important of a reminder it is to step out of the craft to fill your well of inspiration. It's easy to get bogged down with film, 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 film. It's limiting. What can you learn about lighting from music? What could you learn about framing from reading fiction? Which dynamic styles might you conceive from playing a video game? Perhaps drawing could teach you how to block. Dancing might teach you about pacing. And architecture just might teach you about composition. And one photograph could teach you more about story than a hundred films. So why, why don't you want to retire? No, I think it's... Uh... I'd, I'd hate the idea. Hopefully, one of these days, I'll just drop dead on the film set. <laughs> I'd like to extend a limp but determined handshake to Craig McCall for focusing Jack's story in his beautiful documentary, The Life and Work of Jack Cardiff, Cameraman. Please, support it. My name is Trago, and today's episode is sponsored by your eyes. Don't let the bastards grind you down. You're too lickable for that.